What's up, Street Thugs? Brig here, and I'm just going to share my firekin with you. Now, this is a firekin that I designed to farm. I, I honestly never really played. I can't say never. There have been times where I've actually used my firekin for task forces and stuff like that. Um, but most of the time, I was using my firekin to, ra to farm um, way back in the day with the whole Battle Maiden. But of course, now most of the time I just use it for my fire farm. Um, I don't use it very well. To be honest, I haven't used it in a long time. Actually, the last time I actually used it was <laughs> was on a certain server that still must not be named for some reason. I don't know why. Um, that's so weird. I mean, the majority of us already know about that server, and it even went public and was announced publicly, so I don't know. Whatever. But the last time I actually played my Firekin was there. Um, but I was going to share the build for you. Uh, I don't actually have a maxed out Firekin on, on Homecoming. I just never got around to it. It started, but it's only like the level 23. I never finished it. So it, it doesn't have enhancements. It does, It's not set up at all. I just never finished it. I don't know why. I guess I just liked my, my Red Fire so much better. Red, my Red Fire Brute, just what I really like about that build is the fact that I, one, I can AFK if I wanted to. Um, it does a ton of damage. And it's I like the durability. The durability is so much better. I mean, granted, my Firekin is designed for durability, but it caps the 75% resist. So that's... You know, that's a big chunk of resistance you're losing out on. So, I got mids up here. Uh, you know, mids, pines, hero designer, whatever. Um, so, that way you guys can see what I've got going on here. Um, we've got... If we want to just kind of go through here, I'll kind of just run down the powers. And then we'll kind of just touch over the enhancements. Um, maybe show you which ones I actually took. So, you can see you know, what I chose to take, not to take. Uh, but so if we go over here to fire control, um, skipped over ring of fire, took char. Now, char and ring of fire, I really don't use. I mean, it's once in a great while, but I don't use them with my rotation. I don't need to. Um, but I do take char. I got fire cages, which is a, it's a, that's a big one right there. You need fire cages quite a bit. Uh, hot feet, of course, that's, you know, no brainer. Uh, flash fire, which is like the staple for this whole fire farm or uh, for a farmer. Um, flash fire will disorient them and then you can quickly hit that with fire cages. So it locks them in place. They're not wandering all over the place. Keeps them in one spot disoriented and that allows you just to unleash hell without them attacking you. So that's awesome. Or allow your fire imps to unleash hell. Uh, then we got cinders, which is another little uh, stun hold. And then we got fire imps. Now, fire imps are a really good one because not only are they going to throw out a ton more damage, but they also, you can spec in there a chance for buildup, which allows you to boost your output. And then we'll jump over here to, to kinetics. I took transfusion, uh, siphon power, siphon speed, increased density, speed boost, interference, or to interference, transference, <laughs> and of course, the lovely fulcrum shift. And then for my pull powers, I took combat jumping. Uh, we got hasten and speed for in speed. We got concealment for stealth, grant, invisibility, invisibility. Those are my mule powers again. Uh, leadership, we got maneuvers and assault. And for I took uh, fire mastery for the epic pull power. You can, I didn't take, um, I'm a big fan of Moo Mastery, but in this case, when you're on a controller, you don't get all the benefits you do like you would if you're on a Brute. So I went with Fire Mastery. Plus you get one of the biggest bonuses of Fire Mastery, which is Fire Shield, because you're gonna have a hard time maxing out your fire resistance without kind of wasting a lot of slots to get to that max 75%. So we'll go over here to powers. Uh, so in char, I have apocalypse, apocalypse, apocalypse damage, um, and you see I took everything but the chance of damage negative. Now, I'm I'm like actually on the fence about that right now, um, because some comments made in my last video with my radfire brute farmer 
talking about the chance of damage for negative damage. Now, I actually never thought about it as bonus damage. I thought of it replacing the fire damage, but they made a good point that it, it's it's extra damage. So I might actually go through some of these and switch them out for those procs because if it's going to give me bonus damage, I definitely want it. Um, but as you see, as it is right now, I took uh, the, the top five out of the six. And then over here, I have chance for buildup. So every time I hit char, which because I don't use char that much, it does, is a little bit of a waste. But if I do use it or if I try to you know force myself to actually use char, I'm going to get an extra chance of buildup. So, I mean, that's always a, a nice little bonus. Uh, in transfusion, I have preventative medicine. A lot of people always say they prefer panaceas, but in this case, I didn't really feel like panaceas did me any extra bonus that I could actually use. I'm not PvPing in the, when I'm farming, and it the the bonuses were just it just didn't help me. In this case, I get 8.75 recharge, which is huge. Um, you got a nice little boost to endurance uh, discount which is great as well. Uh, but mainly the one I, I took this was the the fire and cold resistance of 3%. That was the big one right there. Um, we'll jump down here to siphon power. I just put a recharge in. It, it recharges pretty fast. You can see, it, you can see there, recharges in 5.28 seconds, uh, which is from its base of 20, and it lasts for 30 seconds. So not really a big deal, but I, I, mean, I got to put something in there. It can't really take anything else, so might as well. Uh, combat jumping, I got, of course, the Luck of the Gambler recharges for that 7.5% that I did stack, again, all five of them. And then I took an extra defense endurance. Defense for, you know, ex extra boosted defense. And, of course, it's a toggle, so endurance is good. The reason I took that is you'll see I have a 10% regeneration. Not a big deal, uh, but still, if I can maximize regeneration, why not? So I did. And then, of course, I have, um, I didn't go red fortunes on these. These I went reactive defenses. Uh, and that's mainly begin for the 3% resistance to fire and cold. Um, because I'm not fiery aura, I got to find that somewhere. So that's got those. Uh, and then, of course, you'll see I have took scaling resist damage. Now, if I were not to have that scaling resist damage, I think it knocks my resist down to like 69%. But the majority of time when you're running this fire can while farming you're going to be in a mob so it's going to cap out at like 75 and a half percent or se yeah 75.5 percent of resistance resistance fire resistance of course caps at 75 so you're going to have it, it's going to be proccing like all the time well it's not actually a proc it it feeds off i think 10 i think it's 10 10 people near you and it, it gets your cap resistance you get from it um, we'll jump down here to fire cages. Uh, now, this is the superior will of the controller. It's the archetype enhancement, which you cannot really see here. So let's just jump over here. There we go. So from from this one, I, it's 4% damage, 8% enhanced mobilize, which is also a great one. Um, and then and then the held one as well, because, you know, your fire kin is, is your key thing for this is is locking down your the people around you. That is your biggest damage mitigation. Uh, even above resistance and your defense, you lock them down. They're not even going to attack you at all. But that bo boosts that. And then, of course, 15% accuracy and the big one, 10% recharge. Now, I am a little over recharge on this. I'm way past perming haste, per perming, perma hasten. But again, that extra recharge also boosts my powers to be faster as well. So we want them to recharge as fast as possible. Um, fire or flash fire is the big one. You want that recharge. I think I'm down to like 20, 22 percent or 22 seconds, which is still a long time, way longer than I wanted, but it, it's really fast that way. And then I got another proc in here, which is chance for resistance debuff. So they take more damage. Uh, we got uh, superior avalanche and hot feet. Now, Hot Feet is one of those ones. It's another toggle. It's another great one. I wanted to get a toggle in there, but I really needed that extra 5% defense from this uh, Lord of Winter set, which is Superior Avalanche. Um, so I had to sacrifice that out there. Uh, but I, I did manage to get, you know, 4% recovery extra with it, 6% um, resist fire, and of course, 5% defense for fire and cold. Uh, super speed, just throw speed in there. 
Flash Fire. There's our big one right there. Uh, Superior Frozen Blast, another Lord of Winter set. And again, 5% fire and defense and 4% recovery. So And 6% fire resistance. All, all good. Now we got Stealth. Now Stealth, I don't actually have on. You don't really need to have it on in this build. It does, it can help um, because it does make you, you know, stealthy. Um, it does slow down your speed just a touch, but um, I'm not too worried about being stealthy when I'm farming, uh, and I don't need the defense boot boost from it, so I just leave it out. But I do have two Luck of the Gamblers in there, one being the recharge, the other one being defense, um, mainly for the extra regeneration, because, again, another 10% regeneration. Uh, siphon speed, just a recharge. And increased density. Since I'm not... This is more of an ally power. And since it's not really affecting me, I mean, it does affect your imps, but I do get a bunch of this in here. So I've got uh, five of the first Aegis powers, and that's mainly because I get uh, two set bonuses that focus on fire defense. So 3.13 fire defense and uh, 1.56 fire percent, fire percent, fire defense. And then... Uh, and then I've got a steadfast protection over here, plus three defense. Uh, we'll jump over here to fire or to cinders. This is that big hold one too. Doesn't recharge as fast as I would like it to. We what is it at 54 seconds? This is a this is one of those big ones, but it's a nice hold when it comes up. Uh, Superior and tomb, which is another Lord of Winter set, and it is six percent fire cold uh, defense or resistance. I'm sorry. 4% uh, recovery, and again, 5% fire and cold defense, which is that big one. Uh, in my speed boost, I hit, uh, I put a chance for end in there. I don't know why I have that there and not in stamina. Oh, I do, because it's not unique. Oh, that's right, I doubled it up. So I got a performance shifter, chance for plus endurance here in speed boost, as well in stamina. Um, you don't need to put a recovery in there, because it's at 0.59. Um, and it lasts for 20 seconds, so I mean, obviously, that's not a big deal. If you can put it in your rotation, you know, there, every time you hit it, there's a chance you're going to get bonus endurance. Uh, grant invisibility, invisibility, both Luck of the Gambler recharges, mule powers. And then maneuvers, I have Luck of the Gambler recharge again. Um, I believe that's my last one, that's my fifth one. And then, of course, I have defense, which is your in, another boost to your 10% regeneration for having the two. And then maneuvers, I have the shield wall, which is the PvP enhancement for 5% resist everything. And then I have a shield wall defense in there. Um, again, this one also gives you 10% regeneration, so bonus. Swift, we just have running speed. Hurdle, just another basic one. And then health, I have Numina's Convalescence, plus regeneration, plus recovery. And I have Miracle. Now, I had stopped doing this at one point. Apparently, I didn't do this here. Um, I, you know, I never actually tested it myself or checked the numbers on it in game as far as combat attributes. Um, I've heard that you're not supposed to put them in there together, but I have them in there together. And then, of course, stamina we talked about earlier, performance shifter, chance for plus endurance. Uh, salt, just an endurance reduction because the only really thing you can put in here is endurance and recharge. Recharge does you no good, so just an endurance reduction. And then Fire Imps, I have Soulbound Allegiance. Now, I only have four. And I have the first one, the third one, the fourth one, and the last one. So damage, accuracy, damage, recharge, uh, which I call a doctor when I'm trying to find one. Um, accuracy, recharge, and chance for a buildup. So what's nice about Soulbound Allegiance and the chance for a buildup on your Fire Imps, it's a proc. But it's not a proc that goes off just when you, you spawn your Fire Imps. It actually has a chance to go off every time one of your fire imps attacks. So you, if you have three imps attacking, there's a chance that each one of those will proc that buildup. So it actually procs quite a bit. And then also for your fire imps, uh, I have a expedient reinforcement, which is the resist bonus for aura for pets. Um, you can also use, there are other options for that. Uh, if you go over here, you can do... Uh, Sovereign Right also has resistance bonus, bonus, and I believe it is here. It is Edict, Edict of the Master, 
which also has a defense bonus. Um, I usually went for these just because it specifically said for pets. I believe the other ones work for pets too. I don't think they give you any bonus. Uh, but because, like I said, I just felt safer saying it because they are for pets. That just keeps your pets alive so you don't have to constantly just respawn them. Just for a little bit longer. Uh, transference, another big one. Uh, recharge on that one is 892. Um, I debated putting a recharge in this one over an endurance, but I feel like the endurance was a little bit better, so I went with that one. Especially since I didn't go for, in this case for my incarnates, I didn't go for agility, which is endurance booster. I went for musculature. Even though, even though when you look on mids here, musculature doesn't really seem like it gives you a bonus, but I'm pretty sure it does. So I put that one in there just for the extra damage. Um, but yeah, transference, uh, just for the extra endurance boost. Fulcrum shift, I put two haste or two hasten, uh, two recharges in. I wish you could do more with fulcrum shift, but unfortunately that's pretty much all you can do. Uh, and it puts fulcrum shift at 14 second recharge. Um, it lasts for 45 seconds. That means you can possibly hit it three times. Uh, you're not going to really stack it three times because the time you get around there, it might be gone, but you can try. Uh, most of the time, you're going to have Fulcrum Shift pretty much perma double stacked. And then Fire Blast, we have Superior Winter's Bites. I got all of them. Again, we got the 5% Fire and Cold. We got the 4% Recovery. We got the 6% Fire and Resistance. And then we got Fireball. I took five Ragnaroks because uh, the sixth one is just Toxic Waste. Uh, but you get 10% recharge, you get the 10% or 15% accuracy and the 4% recovery. And then I also stuck in there an Annihilation, which is a chance for resist buff, which, you know, like I said earlier, just gives you a chance to do more damage. And then Fire Shield. Fire Shield, we got, uh, I think I have the same setup as I do as increased density, but in this case, I have a Gladiator Armor TP protection. 3% defense to all, which is another you know, your PvP ones. And then Hasten. Hasten, we've got, uh, again, two recharges to kind of boost that up quite a bit. Now, if we want to go over here, it's already popped up, but you can see my Fire and Cold is at 45.6% defense, so I'm, it's soft capped. Uh, fire is, is capped at 75%, and like I said, I do have the scaling reactive defense, so if I were to pop that out, it would probably drop down to like 69% maybe 66, but um, you're going to be around a mob the whole time, so it's going to be just fine. And even if you are only around two people and it drops just a little bit, you have everything else going for you. They're going to die pretty damn fast. Um, you all see I got 230% regeneration, which is pretty damn good. I'll jump over here to miscellaneous buffs. Uh, we are at 236% at recharge. So, awesome. And then the, another big one is 265% boost to damage. And that is huge. So, those are the main ones. Uh, we'll go over my incarnates. For incarnates, I have uh, musculature. That's mainly for the damage. Uh, and immobilized duration. Immobilized duration is a really good one, too. That keeps them locked down a little bit longer when you're trying to just burn them down. Um, reactive core. You know, some of, these, some of these incarnates in your interface... I don't know. There's there's some I really like. There's some I've kind of gone back and forth on. I usually fall back on reactive core just for the chance for an extra fire damage over time. And of course, Aegis Core Epiphany for, you know, plus endurance, uh, plus recharge rate, and plus recovery. I mean, I, I usually do Aegis for all my builds. It's just such a, a beneficial utility power. I mean, it's... Uh, I, I don't know if I could not, I don't know if there would be an option in there that actually make me avert to something else. I just, that's just how much I enjoy that power. Um, and then we got Assault Core, extra damage, of course. And that's my Firekin build. Now, I don't really worry about status stuff because, like I said, I primarily use this build just for, for fire farming. Um, it would take some tweaks to get the Smashing and Lethal, but it is doable. I do have a Firekin that's built mainly for... For just task force that has smashing and lethal um, energy and fire all at like 75 percent uh, but you you lose a lot here and there you lose some recharge you lose some damage uh, but it is more durable to survive i am not the glass cannon type i i want durability so 
Um, even when I have a fire kin, I make sure that they can survive. And usually for defense, I focus on them. Uh, I usually focus on, I believe it's it's melee and AOE defense. I don't remember what I have set on there, but again, durability. But this is the fire farm fire kin. So hope you enjoyed. Hope it helped somebody. Uh, like I've said in the other video, this build works for me. It may not work for everybody. Uh, everybody's got different play styles. Everybody's got different builds. I mean, there's a lot of things that you could do differently in this build. There's a lot of changes, a lot of procs you can change, um, powers you can flip up. It's really based on your own preference. Uh, with with all the different sets that you have available, there is so much you can flip and do. You can do completely different combinations and still get to the same spot. Ultimately, this is what I like to do. Really big about fire resistance, fire defense and then recharge and damage. Um, those are my big key things that I focus on. So uh, if, you, if you have any questions or anything, leave a comment. I will do my best to answer. I'm usually pretty good about responding. But like I said, I mean, not some people like it. Some You can't please everybody. You can't make everybody happy. You know, people do get a little defensive about their builds. Uh, and I am not the master builder. You know, that people can create their own things and it could be better so uh, if you have something that's better like I said let me know I'm, I'm definitely open to changes and stuff when it comes to builds uh, this is just what works for me uh, but uh, please subscribe if you like the video or if you're interested in what else I might do uh, like the video it just it helps me out as well this is a new channel that's going on about two and a half weeks now and it's growing so I appreciate all of you guys I appreciate your support but uh, stay golden and take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.